Here's a run through of how to use the Gen 5 software. So on the desktop, just click on Gen 5 2.06. And then what you want to do is set up a protocol. You want to go ahead and create a protocol and within protocols, you can then access uh, an experiment. So if you go to experiment, then you can call up a protocol to use for that particular experiment. Of course, you can have multiple experiments using that one protocol. So when you first start, obviously you need to create it. So go to create new, and then it asks you to select the protocol type. So you have three options. You can have a, proto a standard protocol where the data reduction is performed independently for each plate. So each plate will have different data reduction steps that uh, is followed. You can also have a calibration protocol. So a calibration protocol allows you to have standards on a particular plate be used to analyze data on another plate. So if that's the sort of thing you're doing, then you want to pick the calibration protocol. Alternatively, you can pick a multi-plate assay protocol, and this involves the standards and controls or samples being distributed across multiple plates. And so when it comes to the handling of the data, if you select a multi-plate assay, then this is factored in that your standards, your controls, your samples are distributed on more than one plate. For this example, just go ahead and select a standard where each plate will have its own uh, independent data manipulation. You get the interface where you've got the option of going to a procedure. So here you create or edit the list of steps that you want the program to execute when reading. I'm going to go ahead and choose read and let it know what sort of read we're doing. Are we doing absorbance? Are we doing fluorescence? Are we doing luminescence? So for this example, we just go ahead and select absorbance. We're just looking at uh, light absorbance in the, as the final readout. And you need to select the read type. Is it just one endpoint read or do you want it to do an area scan or a spectrum? So for this example, I'm just selecting endpoint because the assay, the ELISA was performed and then we just want an endpoint. Gen 5 asks you the kind of read speed you want. You can do normal, rapid or sweep. I'm sticking to normal. Then the important part uh, is the wavelength that you want to do the read at, whether it was absorbance, l uh, luminescence or fluorescence. So using absorbance, we're just reading at one particular wavelength. Sometimes you may be doing two wavelengths. So I'm going to go ahead and select. You've got a range of wavelengths depending on the filters that you have. And I'm going to go and select 450 nanometers for my read. But you've also got other wavelengths that you could read at. So with the read, you may want to do like a shake, a quick shake before it reads. Uh, just be careful to put the shake option ahead of the read because if you put it after, the software will complain. So go ahead and select that you want a quick shake. So I'm going to, and, and temperature as well, you get to set. So it's got an incub incubator that's like default on. I don't need the incubator on. I want to just read at room temperature. So I've done the procedure. I want this, uh, the steps that it needs to follow. I have defined it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the plate layout now. Here's where you tell the software where your blanks are, if you're going to have blanks, where your assay controls are, if you're going to have assay controls, where your standard curves are, which you will have if you're doing a quantitative assay, where your samples are, and if you have any sample controls as well, you can select it. So I'm actually going to select select all of these but if you don't have a, a blank or you don't have a sample control or you don't have a negative or positive control you could you could just not select those options just give you a little bit of information it gives you a plate abbreviation like each well abbreviation so i'm going to go ahead and you just type in what the actual abbreviation stands for so later you're not confused and what's important is to say how many replicates you've got are you doing duplicates triplicates quadruplicates so on and so forth. So I'll go ahead and select uh, that I'm doing uh, duplicates. You have a control, then you just go ahead and tell it what the control is in the um, in as the prompts. And once again, remember to change the, the, uh, the number to indicate the replicates that you have. So in standards, you can name the actual standards, like if it's uh, a particular hormone that you're measuring, a particular protein that you're measuring, you can put the name there so you know what the standard was. And you can indicate the units. So if it's like picograms, nanograms, micrograms, amount, milligram amounts or 
maybe even gram amount, <laughs> which is unlikely. Whatever amount that you're using, uh, then you indicate it. So in my case, it's picograms per mil is what my uh, standards are in. You have to enter the standards. That is the step where you actually have to indicate what concentrations of the standards you have. So go ahead and depend on the number of standards that you have, enter that. Then it offers you the option to tell it what samples you've got. So you can tell it the dilutions that you're using or the concentrations that you're using, but often you don't know what your samples are. So you can just leave the bottom part uh, unfilled and just go ahead and ind indicate the number of replicates and move on. Indicate the sample control if you have one, then just click finish and that will allow you to now draw where everything is. So by selecting where a, the blank or the control or the standard, you can put in where it is on the plate because initially you're just saying these are the components I'm going to have and now you tell it where it is on the plate. Starting off with my standard, I just select the top standard and I see at the bottom that uh, the serial assignment is uh, acknowledging that there are replicates. So go ahead and just um, click into the wells and it will just enter it. By selecting on the sample, I can go ahead and tell it how many samples I've got and which wells they're in. The same for your blanks and your controls. Select OK and now it knows when it goes to read the plate which wells contain a standard, which wells contain a sample, which one has your blank, your control and your sample control. Hey, don't forget to save your procedure. So go ahead and select save and name it appropriately. Then it's time to read a plate. You want to use the task manager. So click on task manager and then you will end up back with this dialog box where you can select run. In the run now, you will get the option to retrieve the procedure that you've just saved or any other procedure that you want, and then you'll be able to read the plate. You'll get a dialog box to tell you to, uh, that the plate has, the plate holder is now out and you can place a plate on it. And once you do, it will retract and start reading. Once you acknowledge by clicking OK. After the read, you will be able to toggle between the different wavelengths. If you had a blank wavelength, for instance, you can go ahead and look at the blank corrected read versus the raw reads prior to the blank correction. And finally, you can export an editable Excel format of the result by clicking this icon and then you can go ahead and analyze your data.